Okay, now let's deal with some of the miscellaneous items which happen to be around our kitchen. When it comes to our Keurig machine, something which we can barely do without on a regular daily basis. So let's imagine, if this Keurig machine was only used for pure unflavored coffee, then in that case it can be kosher. The way one would do it is, of course, one had to remove the Keurig, the, the pot itself, the K-cup, but one would actually remove the K, the K cup holder as well, and this itself could be cleaned, could be kashered using Hagala, cleaned fully, left 24 hours and cleaned, and then the entire the entire machine of course needs to be wiped down very carefully, certainly if it's in an area which could be splashed on or touched by common stick things, and one would put it back after 24 hours after doing the Hagala and use a kosher Pesach K cup to be able to do this. Of course one has to be very sensitive and careful when it comes to these things. If one's curing machine is right next to other hot comments activities, one really should know and not be using it. Similarly when it comes to a hot water urn, certainly this is the kind of thing with our coffee station on the Shabbos, if it's used primarily and only for water and it is not used to heat things up on top of during um, on a Shabbos as an example, then in that case the OU has, uh, has said that one can simply bring it to a boil and push down so that the water comes out for 10 15 seconds at the same time pouring hot water right over the spigot itself and that would be sufficient to cushion it. Once again one should just be cognizant of the area that it's in. It obviously needs to be cleaned thoroughly with detergent with a, with a cleaning substance, a caustic cleaning substance on the outside because it was sit perhaps sitting in an area that was that was Chabad's deck. One needs to be very careful to be able to achieve that. In a similar, on a similar front, when it comes to a water cooler, a water cooler can be used. Of course one would have to clean it thoroughly on the outside and one would need to replace the water that one is actually using from the time of Chomets to the time of Pesach. Um, one can certainly use the cold faucet when it comes to the hot faucet. If there is a concern that one use this, let's say, to, to, put, um, to heat up hot oats as an example, and they could have been touching, perhaps it is better either to go with the OU's suggestion of cushioning the spigot of a hot water urn, but if there is real concern of, uh, of being in touch with Chomets, it might be simpler just to cover up and not use the hot spigot and rather just to use the cold the cold spigot. When it comes to soda stream machines, soda stream machines if the bottles themselves have only be used for non-flavored, just regular soda stream and they've not been cleaned in with hot water in connection to any um, regular Chomets vessels, then those bottles can be used. If one doesn't know, one should really buy new bottles just to be used for, uh, for Pesach. The machine obviously needs to be cleaned on the outside to make sure that there's nothing that's splashed onto it itself. Of course, just as a reminder, that one can only use the machines which are not the uh, new electric soda stream machines on a Shabbos and Yonta itself. When it comes to an instant hot, which is sometimes found in different sinks, one is able to use the instant hot if one does the kashering. So when one kashers the sink, when one puts the boiling water all over the sink, one should also kasher the instant hot and one can use that on Pesach as well.